Welcome back to the Purple Cave. I'm Stevie O, and this is Mystical Lady Productions and Studios. All right, this is now part four of an 11 part series of breaking down and reproducing Caden Cashmere's The Sweetest Goodbye. Very special song in the catalog of Warren Hewitt's Produced Like a Pro. Big special thanks to Warren and his staff for giving me the green light to go ahead and do this video series for YouTube. Today in part four, we're going to be recording string parts and synthesizer parts, and also covering some more of the functions of the sequencer I use, the Roland MC300. And if you haven't checked out the videos already, parts two and three, we break down the sequencer a little more as we do drum parts and piano parts. So let's not waste any more time, let's hit the studio. All right, what I think I'll do for this segment, uh, just like I did with part three with the pianos, I'm going to record it in sections. I'm going to record my left hand, do all the stuff on my right hand, and then any kind of overdubs. And for, for editing purposes, I'll show you a little bit at a time what I do so you know, you're not getting the entire recording of the entire track. <laughs> Hey, this is Stevie O. If you are enjoying this content, if you're into this kind of thing, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share and all that jazz. Would really appreciate the love. We'll see you in the next video. Now, just like the drums and the piano, what I love about working with the sequencer is once it's on the sequencer, I can make some changes and do some dynamic uh, improvements to the track and I can also assign it. I could transpose it, show you what I got going on for this particular track. Um, if you break it down, note for note, what I played into it, you could hear it coming through the speakers one note at a time. It's currently on track three, and the dynamic I set so that all my bass parts are coming out at the same level. I've got set at 94 and all my right hand parts I've got at 74 and I was able to do that on two separate tracks and then go back and combine the two tracks so that it comes out all together. Right now it's on track three. And once that's done I'm gonna assign a channel on a channel seven or part seven on my Roland. What I could do over here is Come right over here and take this track three. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit mode. On this, it's edit eight, and it's changed the MIDI channel. So I'm looking at track three is all my string. I'm going to have all MIDI channels, only strings. I'm going to have that go to channel seven on my Roland Integra. Press enter. Are you sure? Yes. Now, when I play that part back, playing seven there. Okay, so we've got drums on two, piano on four, and my strings are now on seven. And then I'm ready to move on to the next string part. And then, like anything you do in recording, you want to save your work as you go. You don't want to wait hours to find out that you made a mistake or erase something or shut something off prematurely. So I want to go ahead and... Uh, save my work and the way I do it on my sequencer here is mode two, load, save, delete or rename. I'm going to go to save, it's going to ask me the song name, press enter, save, it's going to ask me if I'm sure, yes I do. And now my MIDI information is saving to a regular standard old-fashioned floppy disk and I'll back that up onto a second disk as well.
Now what I've done is I picked out a nice little string ensemble violin that I want to use as an accompaniment to the piano towards the end of the song. And it, it's real pretty. Let's see what it sounds like with the recording. harmony part over the violin towards the end of the song. Let's go check out the work on the sequencer, make sure there's no flat or sharp notes, and I'll fix the dynamics and uh, listen back to it. All right, once I'm satisfied with all my edits and the way everything sounds on the sequencer, it's time to go to track. So we're gonna be recording on channel 52 here. Jupiter Strings, record is enabled. Let's hang back and uh, see what we got so far. The strings are much louder. I did that intentionally so that you could hear what's being recorded. Isn't this exciting? Watching the recording? Now keep in mind, you know, this is not the mix, okay? Just recording strings. This silly position I'm in is usually how I hang back when it's recording. It gives me a break. Either that or go on to go chill out on the futon. I could do that. It's good to be the king of the Purple Cave. Recording that violin section now, the very last part I did. Okay, it comes in a little later in the song, so I'll kind of skip to it. But I'll once again come from the sequencer straight into the Integra, part three. Ideas are starting to come a reality. Ideas turning into what you're really hearing and what you're really seeing. It's the job of a producer. It comes from here, goes to here. Just like a painter that paints. Got an idea in your head, and all of a sudden they can put it on a canvas. That always blew my mind, how a painter can paint. Take something right from here and draw it right before your very eyes and make it come alive. As a music producer, that's exactly what we do with music. Love it. Hey, thank you so much for hanging out and watching part four. We are wrapped up doing the sequenced instruments. I still got a lot of work to do in this song. All the drums and keyboards are done. From this point forward in the video series, we're gonna be doing bass, guitars, acoustic and electric, lead guitars, lead vocals, backing vocals, still a lot of work to do in this production. So I hope you come back for part five, which is gonna be bass. Gonna be using the Ibanez to lay some real bass parts. So I hope to see you in that video. Thanks again for your support.